G3 XE here. Today, another dungeon dungeon workshop, and what we are going to be talking about is how to enhance your role playing with simple um, little tricks as the dungeon master, but also as a player. Now, a lot of people on YouTube will say, "Oh, voices. Do voices. Um, you know, here's how you do these voices, and voices are cool." While they are cool, they're kind of hard to do. Some people feel silly doing them. Um, and they don't necessarily enhance the role-playing experience. In fact, they can often be a detriment to the experience because the player, if it, you know, a player might take it as being silly and might take them out of the experience. Um, and I think treading that line can be difficult to do a subtle enough accent or voice that it engages the players without taking them out seeing the dungeon master doing this voice right anyway there are tons of these little tricks and these are just a few you know that i i know of um that can help you and they're really really easy so um unfortunately those who watch my videos know i don't show my face i don't know why i just feel weird i feel it's easier for me to talk if i don't um but uh bear with okay uh number one Messing with your hairs, nervous tick, uh, messing with your nose, right? Uh, doing something. So for a specific character, have a specific nervous tick, not like you're stuttering or anything, although you can do that. But again, it might, uh, it's hard to tread that line to do that in a very, uh, you know, not heavy handed manner, right? So uh, pulling at your ears, right? Like, oh, well, uh, I'm not sure, um, and just do that every once in a while for that character. Running your hand through your hair when you're worried, right? Pulling at your hairs, okay? Um, biting your nails, if that's not gross to you, um, which is kind of is to me, <laughs> but that's the point, right? Um, messing with your nose. <laughs> yeah, you take, uh, take a left down there. <laughs> anyway, right? Something like that. Um, blinking. Right? Not blinking, if you're right, that can be something, or blinking a lot, looking around. Okay? All those are little things. See, because you're limited by the table. We're not actually standing up in a field acting things out. You're limited by the table, you're seen waist up. You have to find things that are easy to accomplish so that you can seamlessly blend them in, right? Those kind of facial tics are good. Alright. Second one. Uh eating. This I stumbled upon by accident. I was really hungry, there are snacks on the table, and I was role-playing as of the GM, this guard who was drunk at the festival, giving faulty directions to the players who were asking where to go. And I just, because I wanted some pretzels, was munching on pretzels, and they couldn't understand what I was saying. They go, what? And then after I swallowed, I was like, oh, sorry, I, I, was, I just was really hungry. And they were like, oh, no, I just... I was in character. I just assumed the guard was eating. And that, that blew my mind. I was like, oh, yeah. So that's amazing, right? You obviously, like, oftentimes we'll have snacks at the table. If you're eating and just talking with your mouth open and just, like, bits of food, right? I mean, that's, if you want to be, role play a boorish character, so easy to do. And doesn't require any voices or anything. All you just got to do is or forget what your mom told you when you were, you know, young and talk with your mouth full and just keep shoveling food in your mouth and be like, oh, well, you see, you go to, right? Very easy. And you get to eat a snack. <laughs> so eating food, that's another good one. Um, slamming the table or any sort of sudden movement, okay? Um, grabbing at someone's uh, shirt sleeve, uh, slamming the table if you lull your characters into a sense of, like, it's kind of slow, you feel it getting slow, it can really, like, snap them to attention. Uh, don't overuse it, but, I mean, all of a sudden just being like, What well, damn it, man! You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's scary. It'll, it'll get people's attention. Um, okay. Um, similar to the food one, uh, though this one is a bit messy. Drinking. Right, a drunk character. If you have a cup of water, pretend it's wine or beer, and pretend you're drunk. It really helps. A drunken character, if you're just like, oh well, I'm doing this. I mean, can be believable. If you're holding a cup, especially if you do the like, hold it up to nipple level, <laughs> like at parties. Um, man, that's way better. Be like, hey, hey, take a sip in between. Wait, wait. I know, I I know you. Right, you're taking sips of drink. Better yet, okay. 
the spit take. If you're if you're okay with being messy, drink when you know. So you're playing an NPC who is about to have knowledge dropped on him by the players. Surprising knowledge, right? Have your drink ready. Be casually sipping it, right? Um, as you and looking at the character who's talking and intentively listening, and then as soon as they drop that knowledge, it'll scare the shit out of your players. If you're like, and you just spit or not really spit, but spray, right? It gets a little gross, but I mean the role play uh, uh, value to that is is awesome, and everyone will get laughs. It'll get lots of stuff. It's very believable. They'll remember that character. Um. And maybe if you're sitting far away, you know, it, try not to get it on other people. But if it just gets on the table a little bit, I mean, it it differs if you're playing at your own place, if this is someone else's table. You know, I usually play my place, um, so I don't worry about it too much. Still, um, spit take is a good one. So the spit take, uh, yeah, the slamming of the table, um, yelling, actual physical yelling when the character is yelling can also take people by surprise, again, depending on what time of day it is and all that, like you don't want to wake up people, roommates and stuff, um, who are sleeping. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, little tricks like that, um, are able to, um, double, triple, quadruple your roleplay value and believability for your NPCs. And they don't require actor training. They don't require voices. All they require is just the stuff that you have around the table, um, and uh, and and just like slight little uses, right? Also, props can come into this, and this is hidden props specifically. Okay, um, so having if there's going to be a magical amulet, buy a little dollar dollar store amulet, right? Keep it around your neck, hidden or something, and they'll be like, wait, my my amulet, and you take it off, you pull it, you know, and then you're, like, handing it to them, that sells it, you know, little props that they don't see until you bring them out, that really sells all of that, um, I guess this bleeds a little bit into acting, but not really, these are little touches that you can do without having any actor experience or anything, because I certainly don't, um, but that really, you know, uh, I think, enhance the role playing so i'm g3xe i'll see you in the next video